Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa nima al wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. To all our affiliates across uh, the country and across the, the world, Lolonyo in the Volta region, we're grateful that you're picking, uh, and, and all the other affiliates, we're grateful. This morning, I, I read at dawn, somebody sent it to me, and it pricked my conscience that the national security has intervened in the uh, proposed picketing at the frontage of the personal office funded and, and operated personally with the funds of H.E. John Dramani Mahama by a group calling itself Fixing the Country, uh, who are an appendage of the government and who actually are known MPP people holding positions and actually have, you know, uh, you know, handling stuff. In fact, not hopes and was part right now. He's with the, the, the butterfly. He said we we're going to pick it at the frontage or the home of uh, former President John Dramani Mahama. The National Security says they have intervened because it was said the wrong precedents. Thank you to the National Security for being wise and smart. But the police had earlier given them a clean bill of health to go. When I tell you in this country we have Ajana 1, Ajana 2, you say no. The National Security says it will set the ba a bad precedent and the wrong one indeed. Because you're dealing with the two major political parties. And you have interests at stake. And you saw the videos that people were putting up. They were sharpening their cutlasses and their machetes and etc. And it was a bad sight. The police had given clean bill of health. That go, go, go ahead and go and do your picketing. If Baka Vama, Vama and his people say, we want to do Occupy Julobi House, they'll say, we don't have the time. We don't have the men. We don't have the people to go and shepherd you. They pick and choose. I think that they, maybe we sh they should have been allowed to go there based on the assessment and intelligence that the police had gathered to say, oh, go ahead. Because they, they, this whole national security intervention is as a result of the fact that the young people also within the NDC say, okay, we also will not sit down and wait for you. You come. What, what kind of country are we building? What kind of country are we building that if a government is in power, that the government has... A, a right over everything and anybody and every... What, what kind of country are we building? What kind of country are we building at all? What kind of country are we building? We saw in the United States when Ms. Honorable Kennedy Japan, Mr. Kennedy Japan took uh, Kelvin Taylor to, to court in the U.S. We saw the decision of the U.S. that he was doing it in the public interest. I don't want to compare. But it's, it's, it should set all of us thinking. And I've said that, look, if you live in a country where people belong to associations, people belong to labor unions, people belong to groups, people work in institutions, and when they have issues, they won't go to their bosses, but they will come to the media, they will come to Johnny Hughes on Johnny's Bite, there's a problem. We live in a country where if people in Mepe and parts of Volta Eastern region are from plains, and the rest, they are affected by the uh, uncontrolled dam spillage, by the VRA, that's unnecessary action that they took that they have not apologized sincerely for it. They call it that it is necessary that the dam was going to break. But in the past, they had been done very well before. You live in a country where when people fall into that kind of distress, the individuals and citizens and corporate organizations do not take their relief items and give to government to say, go and give to the people. But they bring it to private individuals like Media General and other media houses to say, go and give it to them because they know when they bring it to us, the things will get to the people. When they give it to the state, it will end up in somebody's home. We live in a failed state. I've given you just two examples. I could give you some more. So, this is an indication. You want to pick it at a Jubilee house, you want to pick it close to you. say, no, 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 we don't have the people. We don't have but on the day of the demonstration, they will find people to come and stop you from demonstrating. So how difficult is it using the same set of resources to say, look, we want to use these same resources that we're going to use to prevent you from demonstrating and, and airing your views 
a, a, a government that came to power through demonstrations. We are going to use the same resources to say that we are going to use the same resources to help you to go and demonstrate peacefully. We will even join you to demonstrate. As we saw, Black, Black Lives Matter and all of that. We did a vigil here. We spent state resources to do a vigil here. Now, let's go to Speaker Bagwin. <clears throat> At the speaker's conference, he spoke. He spoke about his residence, which was nearly sold. Listen to him. His residence was nearly sold. The spe speaker Bagwin's residence was nearly sold. And I've told you that I know some security people who have told me that they live in their house. They have not gone anywhere. They live there with their families. And then all of a sudden, they see people constructing walls around their homes. They call their, if it's the military, they call 48, 49. They ask them, are you the ones doing this? If it's prisons, they say, oh, they call their uh, projects, departments. Are you the ones doing this with the police? They call them and they say, oh, it's not us. Then they go and ask the people, say, oh, the property has been given to us. Now it is not create loot and shell. You know, it is loot and shell. It is loot and shell. government, we have had to be offended a number of times. And even we lost almost all our properties. And so we are now struggling to get even our lands up some structures to accommodate parliament. Many of you don't know that even the residence of the speaker was almost sold to private sector. <laughs> Actually, it was given out. It's when they went to register that Lands Commission identified that that is the residence of the speaker. <laughs> Luckily, I was inside, so it was safe. <laughs> That, that is how embarrassing the situation that has got to right. The speaker was in the house. Huh? He was in the house. <laughs> then the Lands Commission hurriedly came to write uh, a response to it. A response was signed by no other person than the Ogakpata, the man at the top. He says, 20th November, press release, speaker's residence sold to private developer the lands commission has become aware of reports of in the section of the media suggesting that the right honorable speaker of parliament's official residence at cantonment has been sold to a private developer the commission wishes to state emphatically that at no point in time was the said property sold to any private developer by the lands commission records available to the commission indicates that one the land in question was acquired in 1920 by a certificate of title uh, dated the 7th of june 1920 for government services too. Since 2023, the land has always been used as the official residence of the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament 3 by an application dated the 15 November 2022 and numbered PS slash LS stroke 002 stroke 12 stroke 22 parliamentary service applied for a certificate of allocation to regularize the occupation of the land which measures approximately 1.66 acres. Four at, at 864 Regular meeting held on the 22nd of December 2022. The Regional Lands Commission approved the application after all statutory processes, including planned approval from the LA, that the Kotopo Municipal Assembly had been duly concluded. That is uh, the first page. The second page, which features page five, says, on 14 of February 2023, the Lands Commission made an offer of allocation to parliamentary service. Six it says parliamentary service accepted the offer and after paying the requisite fees, a certificate of allocation dated 28th of April 2023 was issued to the parliamentary service. The Lands Commission is therefore unaware of any purported, purported sale of the right honorable speaker of parliament's official residence to a private developer. The commission wishes to reiterate its commitment to the prudent and efficient management of public lands in the national interest and promote effective land administration that is anchored on the highest standards of integrity, transparency and candor. And that's signed by Benjamin Arthur, is the acting executive secretary. So the question is, Johnny Benjamin Arthur, who call Hoko here then? Who asked you to come and respond? This is the speaker addressing his conference. He, he says that his home was nearly sold. He didn't say his home was sold. He said it was nearly sold. Thankfully, he was there. So it didn't happen, but he was there. They checked. Bring me the speaker's response from parliament. I mean, it's Parliament's response, so I guess that it will be the Speaker's response. They have responded to it. Listen carefully to the letter, please. This is dated the 22nd of November 2023. Press release. Mr. Speaker's official residence and related issues. We refer to 
uh, the media stories on and reactions to the statement by the right honorable Alban Zumana Kingsford Bagbin, Speaker of Parliament, regarding the official residence of the Speaker of Parliament. It must be noted that Mr. Speaker stated the attempt at selling his official residence, which he made reference to during the Speaker's Breakfast Forum in Accra on Monday, 20th November 2023. The potential buyer proceeded to the Lands Commission for the necessary due diligence and realized that the status of the property, this was when Mr. Speaker got to know about it. We also wish to state as follows. One, listen carefully, please. The right honorable speaker did not say the speaker's official residence had been sold. What he said was that it was almost sold. Two, the reaction by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Ministry of Works and Housing, and the Lands Commission so far have not tackled the subject matter of alleged sale. Grasp the substance, leave the shadows. Who is trying to buy it and who is trying to sell it? That's what they want to know. Three, a visit to the official residence of Right Honorable Speaker will unveil that almost all the surrounding buildings and accompanying parcels of land have been sold out to private developers. A visit to the official residence of the Right Honorable Speaker will unveil that almost all the surrounding buildings and accompanying parcels of land have been sold out to private developers. High-rise apartments have been constructed all around leaving the speaker's residence as an island and endangering the safety and security of the right honorable speaker. Let this one sink in. Four, a trip down memory lane reveals that sometime in 2019, the official accommodation of the sitting clerk to parliament located in cantonments, I told you yesterday about cantonments, homes that I knew, cantonments, Roman Ridge, etc., they are all gone, was sold to a private developer. The, the official residence of the clerk, sitting clerk to parliament. He had not gone. He was in parliament. He was still working. He had not retired. His home was sold to a private developer. Other properties assigned to parliament have suffered similar fate, i.e. they have also been sold to private developers. Five, we, encourage, we are encouraged by the decision of the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources to investigate this matter and hope the investigations will establish who attempted to sell and who the potential buyers was. Boss, don't be encouraged, though. The lands, the natural resources minister, led by Abu Jinapo and the Gamanche and his Mankralu, said they were going to investigate who was taking the Archie Mota forest. You remember that? When the forest found its way in somebody's will to say, I have willed a portion of the forest to you forever. You remember that? Sir John's will. It was there. They said they were going to investigate. It has been more than a year, almost two years. Have they brought the response to this? They have not brought it, so please don't be encouraged. I've told you that in this country, the people who help you to law, pretend to help you to look for what, uh, what has been stolen from you, sometimes have it in their back pocket and they come and help you to look for it. Like primary school kids do when they take your eraser or your sharpener, they keep it in their back pocket and then they help you to look for it. Or they steal your lunch money and they help you to look for it. Five, six. Transparency in this matter is of utmost importance for the sake of public confidence in state institutions. Signed by David Sebastian Damwa, Director, Media Relations Department, Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Now, Parliament that is now putting right. the bedding on whoever rushed to come and respond. Mr. Arthur, they say come and tell them who attempted to sell the Speaker's residence and who attempted to buy it. They have also told us that in the past 2019, not so far in 2023, so 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, the sitting clerk, eh, the sitting clerk, his official residence, it was sold. Other properties of parliament have been sold. I don't want to go to other lands. Go to Tamale. Recently, some place was declassified and given off. Long lease. And, and if you, lived in, you have lived in Accra for a very long time, you know the, all these places. And you, you can just picture them, how, what they looked like back in the day and what they look like now. So now we are not creating new land. We are just looting and sharing. We are not creating. Just as Dote said, some people were creating, looting, and sharing. Now we are not creating. We are looting and sharing. That's what we are doing. We are looting and sharing. And that is what will make a chief cry, for example, that instead of focusing on what has to be done, what has to be done for the people, we are not interested. Listen to the chief. Well, just watch the chief. Watch him. The chief. And I have to. But just watch him. And you will feel the pain of the chief. Just watch and listen to the chief. Just listen to him. Oh, I can't wait here. 
Se me kasa me baabe gusu amenu me gu ase. Se me sa tutu kwa ni nyina. Nsana ma sayen fofro. Ane ene ene. Na no na na do ba me kasa na na. Fu 20 ma bosom nyina adwane afira hwia. Ana muti se me kasa me tirim. Na ya ni bri sem. Fu tro na ma me ti. Me ya nya yade e wo tire ho. Ada ya ya bo ne ban. Aha fu ma ya ya bo ne ban. Kasa da mi rafo. Ada yi. Ya was says this is me enu pena ya ndi sifo dia. I have for your two your two my MPP. Na fe dia ba no say. Ani afa titi Musa. Koko kakra o mutumi toyi. Anya kwa we so ani fa ko. Wo ba ko bia na card afom. Ana ya nua nyina bo kana fo na twa nyina ani ko. Ya fo la sin nyina na say. Ana si o twa na wu su se wa wa dan so be pa. Adai. Ya kano kura, musimu ya kano kure. Adai, ya ya pwane bai. Johnny's bite. And the situation was so dire that Nana had to cry in public. His elders had to move speedily to go and salvage the situation. But you heard him. Nana Akwesi Bosompra, the first. Gosu Mahini Ahafo. Said there are six districts. Four of those districts vote for the MPP. Two vote for the NDC. But they don't know what they have done. There has been the year of roads. The second year of roads, another year of roads, and they have a dust, dust infested, dust laden road. And he says all his gods have run away. Now, when he speaks, he speaks without the counsel of his gods. He just speaks. This is a paramount chief. He's just talking. He's, he's not happy about the situation. He has subjects. He is. He is Speaking the sentiments of his subjects. And that is a story that resonates in many places. But when you say it, they say, shut up. When you say it, they say, keep quiet. When you say it, they say, shut up. Now we are talking about blue economy and we are talking about 24-hour economy. The things that we're supposed to fix as a country, first of all, we have not fixed it. We have left them and we are coming back with new ideas. Show me Gabi Asarachi Daku. Now it's quiet. These days it's quiet. Maybe on hindsight he realized that some of the things he put out there was not proper. Right. He says in Ghana. Maybe, maybe we'll wrap it up with this one. He says in Ghana, we reward those who fail. Fail. And you may get as high as the vice presidency. It pays to fail. In Ghana, we reward those who fail. Fail, and you may get as high as the vice presidency. It pays to fail. This was on August 1, 2012. This is from a lawyer who has also been a transaction advisor to a PDS deal that was botched, many other deals. This is a very important member of the New Patriotic Party, a very important voice, even though he's not in government, but Frimpon Boating's report and many others, he was making calls and the rest. So he's a very important member of the, of the Society of the Republic of Ghana. But in 2012, under somebody else, when Nana wanted to become president on the second attempt, he says, in Ghana, we reward those who fail. Fail and you may get as high as the vice president. It pays to fail. He was talking about John Muhammad then. So is that why we are getting the kind of Failure we are experiencing because we have failed. Kennedy Japan said it, that anybody, any people, any person that takes us to the IMF has failed. Johnny's now their own words are biting back. Their own words are biting back. 
Tomorrow we'll continue. But let's quickly, let me give you the magic numbers for the 3FM All White Party. Quickly, quickly. Stone Boy is inviting you. Johnny Manifest Spice. is inviting you. Aquabua is inviting you to join us at the Plush La Palm Royal Beach Hotel for the 3FM All White Party on the 28th of December, 2023. We start at 7 p.m. sharp. If you haven't gotten your table yet, you should try and get your table. There'll be live performances, DJs on rotation. You saw the Samba Girls. There'll be a lot of activities. There'll be grills and chills and many other exciting times. Just rock your best white. Come with family and friends. If you are a boss and you think that your staff have delivered excellently on the job, bring them, grab a table, whether it's the platinum, the diamond, the gold, the silver, the bronze. Just get them out there. 53 one one zero zero nine two seven zero five three one one zero zero nine two seven and zero five three two two zero zero nine two seven please call those numbers right now